In today's cartoon story joke, the hallowed halls of hilarity, where punchlines land with the grace of a penguin on roller skates and puns multiply faster than roaches at a bakery convention. But today, we're taking a detour drier than a nun's armpit on laundry day. Buckle up, because we're diving into the world of a priest on his first day on the job. Just hold on, got to chuck some holy water to wash away the taste of that last jokey. Okay, maybe we can keep things somewhat holy. Gather round sinners and saints alike for a whirlwind tour through history's funniest, well, almost, encounters with the dearly departed. We'll delve into the peculiar practices of ancient Egyptians who mummified their loved ones with enough linen to stock a toga factory and chuckle at the blunders of bumbling gravediggers with pickaxes more suited to a conga line than breaking ground. Prepare to witness the hilarious consequences of forgetful priests with a penchant for misplaced piety who might accidentally read your eulogy at your neighbor's poodle's wake. Because let's face it, who can resist a heartwarming story about a dog who chased squirrels with the zeal of a furry crusader? This historical meander may not leave you doubled over in laughter, but it will perfectly prime your soul for a future joke of epic proportions involving a well-meaning priest, a misplaced funeral, and a Viking horde with a serious case of mistaken identity. Let's just say the punchline involves a rather unexpected audience and a whole lot of mead-fueled confusion. So grab your metaphorical shovels, settle in, and get ready to unearth a tombstone full of chuckles. Let's begin our odyssey in the scorching sands of ancient Egypt. Death, for the Egyptians, was a grand transition, a journey to the afterlife. Their elaborate burial rituals, while undeniably fascinating, often involved some truly bizarre practices. Priests, adorned in elaborate, and frankly, rather impractical, headdresses meticulously mummified the bodies of pharaohs, ensuring their journey to the next life was comfortable and, hopefully, bug-free. These mummification techniques, while impressive, weren't exactly foolproof. One particularly forgetful priest, a fellow named Hotep, whose memory was about as reliable as a sundial on a cloudy day, somehow managed to misplace the pharaoh's most prized possession, his golden scarab. Imagine the scene, the grand procession to the tomb, the wailing of mourners, the air thick with incense, only to find the pharaoh's sarcophagus empty, except for a bewildered mummy missing its most important bling. Hotep found himself demoted to mummy-polishing duty, a far cry from the glory of overseeing royal burials. Fast forward a few millennia, and we arrive in medieval Europe. Death, in this era, held a different kind of weight. The Black Death, a plague that swept across the continent, left graveyards overflowing and gravediggers perpetually overworked and, unsurprisingly, a little morbid in their humor. These hardy souls, calloused hands wielding shovels and pickaxes, weren't exactly known for their comedic timing. One such gravedigger, a fellow named Bruno the Bone Bone Crusher, a nickname earned through sheer dedication, if not a touch of exaggeration, was known for his unique approach to his profession. Bruno, fueled by a healthy dose of ale and a morbid sense of humor, would often embellish his tales of the deceased, regaling tavern patrons with fantastical stories of vampire counts and fire-breathing dragons, much to the amusement of some and the utter horror of others. One rainy afternoon, Bruno, working under particularly gloomy skies, mistakenly unearthed a long-forgotten wine cellar instead of the intended grave. The resulting discovery, a trove of aged, surprisingly well-preserved vintages, turned Bruno into a local hero, and a very tipsy one at that. The following week's sermon, delivered by a red-faced priest with a splitting headache, focused heavily on the perils of excessive drinking and the importance of accurate grave digging. Now, let's shift our focus to the often overlooked and occasionally hilarious world of priests. These men, and sometimes women of the cloth, despite their solemn duties, have found themselves in some rather comical situations throughout history. Take Father O'Flanagan, for instance, 
a man with a penchant for misinterpreting metaphors so spectacularly, it would make angels weep, with laughter, of course. Father O'Flanagan took a biblical passage about spreading the good word a little too literally. Bless his enthusiastic heart, he decided to take his sermons on the road, traveling from village to village, mounted on a rather temperamental donkey named Bartholomew, for reasons that remained a delightful mystery even to the priest himself. His sermons, delivered with gusto and a surprising amount of physical comedy, Bartholomew's frequent bucking fits added a touch of unintended theatricality that left audiences unsure whether to be pious or prepare for a rodeo, were often met with more laughter than pious contemplation. One particularly windy day, while attempting to deliver a particularly passionate sermon on the evils of gossip, a topic that seemed particularly ironic considering the upcoming chaos, Father O'Flanagan lost his grip on his notes. The parchments promptly scattered across the field like a flock of startled pigeons, their holy pronouncements replaced with the frantic pronouncements of villagers scrambling after wind-blown sermons. The resulting scene cemented Father O'Flanagan's reputation as the Whirlwind Priest, a title he wore with surprising pride, even if it did raise a few eyebrows at the next clergy conference. Father O'Malley, a wide-eyed rookie priest fresh out of divinity school, bounced with nervous excitement. Today was the big day, his first official duty as a parish priest. He wasn't delivering a sermon on the evils of gossip or the importance of tithing. Oh no. Today, Father O'Malley was going to officiate a funeral. Not just any funeral, mind you, but the very first one at the brand new Happy Glades Memorial Park, a sprawling cemetery on the outskirts of town. The deceased was a kind soul named Mr. Henderson, a homeless man who shuffled through the streets with a worn backpack and a gentle smile. Father O'Malley, ever the optimist, saw this as an opportunity to give Mr. Henderson a send-off, filled with the love and dignity he likely never received in life. He spent hours crafting a heartfelt eulogy, rehearsing it in his tiny apartment with only his goldfish, Bubbles, for an audience. He envisioned a beautiful ceremony, the golden rays of the afternoon sun glinting off the polished headstones, the scent of lilies mingling with the crisp spring air, and most importantly, tears in the eyes of mourners moved by his powerful words. Unfortunately, Father O'Malley's inexperience with small-town geography led him astray. He arrived at Happy Glades Memorial Park a good 20 minutes late, his neatly ironed robes rumpled and his brow slick with sweat. Skidding to a halt, he flung open the car door only to be met with a sight that sent a cold dread down his spine. There were no mourners, no lilies, no glistening headstones. Just a lone backhoe, its mechanical maw hovering over a freshly dug ditch, and three burly workmen in hard hats staring at him with expressions of utter bewilderment. Flustered but determined, Father O'Malley boomed out a powerful eulogy that echoed across the empty cemetery. His voice cracked with emotion as he spoke of Mr. Henderson's kindness, his gentle spirit, and his unwavering faith. He concluded with a heartfelt prayer, his eyes squeezed shut in pious devotion. A moment of reverent silence followed. Then, one of the workmen nudged his buddy and leaned in, muttering, Man, that was something else. You wouldn't believe the things you see doing septic tank installations these days. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.